Yo, what's going on, everybody, man? Look, welcome back to the area, man. Capital Area Human Services on podcast, man. Look, we are so excited to have y'all back with us. With us, I can't talk today. I don't know what's going on with me, but Miss Tiffany, what's going on? Life's good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, look, I'm so happy I got Miss Tiffany here, man, because you know, uh, sometimes you need that 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 balance. You know, I feel like uh, you and you might think different. I feel like I'm more down here, but when I see Miss Tiffany, she's like. You know, <laughs> so you know, sometimes you need that smiling face that'll make you smile. You know what I'm saying? It's contagious. So smile or get around somebody that's smiling, right? Anyway, look, welcome back, man. Once again, man, uh, we have a dynamic episode today, man. Uh, before we get into it, man, I want to first say Happy Social Workers Month, National so- Social Workers Month, right? Yes. Did I get that right? <laughs> yes. So happy. National Social Workers Month to all the great social workers out there. But look, here at Capital Area, we have many great social workers. But today, we got one of the best. (laughs) We got one of the best of the best. Miss Tiffany. Oh. Alexis. (laughs) It's like I know your last name, but then I had a brain for it. I was like, oh, I I forgot it for a second. All right, I'm sorry. Miss Tiffany Alexis. So, uh, I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. I mean, of course, we know Tiffany Alexis, but um, let us know, uh, or the people watching, let them know who you are, uh, uh, how long you've been here at Capital Area, the work that you do, and uh, and expound on that a little bit. Just kind of talk about the work that you do. Sure. Well, um, I'm a licensed addictions counselor. Um, I've actually been here now uh, a year and two months, so in a few days. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, it's been great. Um, I do a lot of different things. We do assessments, there's counseling, mm-hmm. there's group counseling, um, you know, and a lot of, you know, just really trying to help the people in, in the community. Yeah. You know, significant things, meeting people where they are and, you know, just trying to bridge a gap to yeah. help them to be the best that they can be. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. And Ms. Tiffany, uh, we, we've had uh, a lot of conversations. Uh, yes. I didn't say a lot, but we've had a handful. Yes. You know? Yes. And so, um, and and from my conversation, uh, conversations, I can't talk today. What's going on? My <laughs> conversations with you, um, you know, I, I feel like you you are a person, uh, and, and, and this is not to say that anybody else, uh, anything about anybody else, but I feel that you are a person who truly cares about the work or, or about the people that you work with. You know, as a social worker, uh, what do you feel like? Um, what do you feel like the, uh, a person needs uh, from a characteristic standpoint, personality standpoint, whatever it may be, to be a social worker? Like, what do you feel that person needs? I think they definitely need the ability to listen. Mm. You know, um, you you get someone that's coming to you and they're they're broken. They're they're at their lowest point and they really need help. Mm. So your ability to listen helps because once you're a good listener and they get out what they feel that their problem is, then we can talk about solutions. But can you imagine trying to help someone that feels that they haven't been heard Mm -hmm. and it's like you know that person will feel like well i don't want to talk to you 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 didn't hear me you're not in touch with what's actually going on with me yeah come on so being able to listen i think is huge that's good that's Mm -hmm. good yeah yeah no i I agree man uh you know being a person that's uh in recovery myself and going through uh you know different forms of treatment uh you know it, it was important for me uh, to have people that would uh, listen um, and, and, and not judge, you know, yes. at the same time. Yes. Uh, I, I'll never forget this, man. Quick story. There was a counselor that I went to, uh, you know, in the, in the midst of addiction. And uh, and this was like on an outpatient basis. So, you know, I just kind of went to a private counselor and, you know, we had a one-on-one session and uh, we, you know, had a few sessions. And so uh, we had this one session, which uh, was my, my last session with him. Yeah. But... I sat there and uh, I told him some things that, uh, you know, I, I definitely, at least I felt comfortable because, you know, at this point we had kind of built uh, somewhat of a rapport and uh, and I felt like, okay, well, this person is here to help me. They listen to me. They're here to help me work through things and find solutions or whatever, you know, and so maybe I can open up to this person about it. And when I did, no. I, I got the opposite reaction, you know. And, uh, and and I don't know if he intended to do it. I I, I feel like 
maybe he probably thought about that afterwards because it was like an initial reaction that and, and it was just like a oh you know what I'm saying like a and I was like oh well, damn you know what I'm saying well that made me kind of shut down I'm like okay well I don't want to talk about it no more because I feel like this is too much for you or you can't handle this or now you're looking at me like I'm sick you know what I'm saying and so uh, so no I, I believe that that's from experience that's definitely important you know and so uh, but anyways um, yeah sorry for the story time but yeah let's keep it that's moving that's great that's great <laughs> so uh, yeah Miss Tiffany so let's talk man uh, let's 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 go back a little bit because um, you, you've you been a well I know you said you, you've been here at Capital Area a little over a year now yeah but you've been in the field you, you've been a social worker let me say for how long Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, what? 13 years? Okay. Yeah, just about, yeah. Because I actually, when I think back, yeah, roughly about 13 years. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay, okay. And so in, in your 13 years, what's been, um, what, what's been the, what, what keeps you going in the field of social work? Because let's be honest, this kind of work, if you, if you, if you are not built for this kind of work, it can, it can uh, tear you down. It will tear you down. It will put you out the game. It will drop kick you. Bruce Leroy, whatever. Yeah. But anyways, um, so what is it that keeps you going, you know what I'm saying, in this field of social work? Like, why have you continued after 13 years? Well, there is something very profound that takes place when you see that you're helping a person and they're taking it and they're running with it. Yeah. Not only does that keep me going, but you have to have a love for what you do. I've always had such a love for psychology. I continue to read as much as possible, which I think is critical because, yeah. you know, those theories, there's a lot of good there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'd like to watch Netflix, but it's better to read. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> you good. know, and maintain your skills. And not only that, you take that knowledge and there's a human connection that takes place where you're really in tune with, oh, I can see what this person needs. Mm -hmm. You know, what do I need to do? What, what do I need to do to just help them get where they're trying to go? That's good. You that's know, good. and that, that's critical for me. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a love for people. I do have um, an intense love for people. And you get tired sometimes. Yeah, yeah. When, when I get tired, I say, okay, I'm going to the spa today or I'm going to get my nails Come done. On, self yes, <laughs> you, you have to replenish. Yeah. And then when you replenish, you can come back and give times 10. That's good. That's mm -hmm. good. I mean, you, you just gave like a few nuggets. I want to rewind because one thing you said, uh, I think this is key for this. I, I think this goes for everybody. I mean, whether you are a person that's a professional or you could be you know receiving services whatever it is but she said other than watching that rather than watching netflix she would go read you yes. know what i'm saying and so I, I think it's so important that you know when you are trying to be great at something you know what i'm saying like you have to sacrifice uh those things that are not gonna uh be conducive you know yeah. what i'm saying to you know get you there and so even for me like when i got into recovery man look i was head first you know like i was at every meeting i read that book the big yes. book i'm practicing every step i want to know look i'm i'm opening up the bible and i'm doing whatever I got to do because I have an intense obsession with this on staying on the right road and getting where I need to get to so I can be a productive citizen. You know what yes. I'm saying? And so, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I wanted to highlight that. And um, uh, one last thing you said, but I can't remember. I, I, I get brain force a lot. Sure. But I don't want to hold the people up. So we ain't going to worry about my brain force. We're going to keep it moving, right? So, uh, but yeah, that, that's great. So also, uh, let, let, let's kind of go here because um, everybody has a why. Yes. You know, ev everybody has a why, whether whether people realize it or not. If you don't know your why, I think you need to identify that why. But uh, uh, what 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 is your why? Why did you become a social worker? Oh, <laughs> well, because you could be many things. Yes, many things. Why social work? Well, social workers played a key role in my life. Mm. So um, I went into foster care very young. You know, and we talked about this before. Um, my mother was an alcoholic and, um, you know, a cocaine addict, and she met her demise that mm. way. And so I went into foster care very early, and 
My social workers stood out to me. Come on. You know, my counselors stood out to me. Yeah. Um, that was the first time in my life that I saw a professional person like, wait, all moms aren't drug addicts. Mm. You know, uh, this woman drives a car. That was a big deal. Yeah. She had a career. Mm. She made dinner at six o'clock, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, in the evening. And that was a big deal. Yeah. And I that became something that I could emulate. Mm -hmm. And the pain, um, and this is interesting. Most of the times when we see a doctor, what we don't know is that, not in every case, but in a lot of cases, they may have had a sibling that had Down syndrome or some other illness that really prompted them internally to feel like, hey, I wanna fix this. Mm. And so, you know, when I think about my, my mother, I often wished that there was someone there that could have helped her pull through yeah. this horrible thing that she was going through. Mm -hmm. And I learned about counseling and I learned that that's what counselors do. Mm -hmm. So when I tell you I feel like I'm a pea in a pod, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I definitely feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be. I have a thirst for the knowledge that comes with just building a better life and mm -hmm. being your, your best self. That's good. And you have to, I, f I feel like you have to have that mindset because when you do, you can't help but to spread it to others. That's good, that's you good. Know. Man, wow, that's heavy. So uh, during, during, during that um, process, because you know, uh, we're, we're going back to the age of, uh, let, uh, what age were you when you went into uh, custody? Oh, 12, 12 and a half, 13. Now I did have a beautiful foundation with my grandparents. Okay, they, okay. That was a wonderful piece, but they were getting too old to care for me and they just couldn't do it anymore. I understand. And what's very interesting about trauma mm -hmm. is that at what time in your life is it happening? So you got to factor in this is pre-adolescence, mm -hmm. you know, and that in itself has um, a specific trauma as opposed to if it had happened to me when I was three or four or five, yeah. I'm going to process it differently. Mm -hmm. So. That's important too. A therapist needs to understand, well, at what age bracket and at what time did this happen mm -hmm. to this person? Because that's gonna affect their outcome as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you wanna be the best you can. Do your homework. Yeah. You know, make sure the person sitting in front of you, you're giving your best. Mm -hmm. uh, they need that. Yeah. Because yeah. if, if you're, you're half stepping, mm -hmm. then how can you serve and help anybody else? You can't. Come on. You that's really good. can't. That's good. What 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 does that do? Like well, like how you're making this? Um, I don't want to say differentiation, but um, I guess the difference in you know, like you said, whether it happened at the age in between that three or five versus you know being 12 years old. Like from a perspective aspect, uh, when you're dealing with trauma, like what difference does it make? Uh, you know, based on that person uh, when it happens in their life. Like what what what? what how do you explain it? Okay. It Think about this. So at three to five, mm -hmm. you know, at that time, it's a, it's a time of exploring. You're kind of understanding various things, simple things about life, mom, dad, I go to the park. Mm -hmm. But then think about a 12 and a half or 13 year old. Well, the adolescent stage is a very early time for adulthood, believe mm -hmm. it or not. You're starting to figure out, well, who am I going to be? Um, who will I emulate all of these things yeah. you know the, yeah. the your your past experiences up until the age of 12 mm -hmm. has shaped you and so when you you get to that point it's it's really really challenging for teenagers because it's like I don't know who I am mm. um, I'm I'm sapped with all of these emotions yeah. and there's something else that's very interesting that takes place. So I always talk about this. Your executive functioning skills don't come until like, I think it's the age of 25. Okay. So that's your frontal lobe. That's the time where we were learning about good decision making and mm -hmm. all of these things. Mm -hmm. And we just don't have that. We don't have that the those tools just yet. I understand. And that's why you have your parents. Mm. So now your parents have been ripped from you. Mm. You're going into foster care. You're dealing with strangers. Yeah. Your home environment 
it's very much like take a flower, take a, a beautiful flower, and then rip it out from its roots, mm -hmm. okay? That's huge. Yeah. If, if I can't replant that flower instantaneously, I'm going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. And it, you're very vulnerable. You have to continuously be nurtured. Your self-esteem mm -hmm. has been shot. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you have to rebuild all of those things, mm -hmm. and that's what a lot of times um, a counselor. Most of the time, we do. You know, uh, I feel like a really good counselor is in touch with. Okay, at what age bracket is this happening, yeah. and what are the supports that we can put in place to mm -hmm. help that child to get better? That's good. So that's, good. that's that's a big part. That's a huge component of it. Wow! Mm -hmm. Wow! Wow! That's all right, yeah, I yeah. have an understanding. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, so let's uh, let's let's talk about uh, some of the ways that you uh, work through trauma mm -hmm. uh, personally, because you you know I mean of course you're on the other side today and helping others to navigate. How did you learn to navigate? Like how did you get through? Uh, and, and I'm saying get through, but even if you're I, I don't know, maybe still getting through in some ways, but how, what what are the things that you did early on? What continued to help you deal with, uh, you know, those traumatic experiences? Well, one of the things I've learned is feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm. So you're going to have those times, you're going to have a situation in your life that rattles your cage a bit. Yep. That happens to all of us. You feel the fear and you do it anyway. Mm. And so the more you continuously perform the action that's actually making you afraid, mm -hmm. it takes the edge off. Mm -hmm. You start to get better and better at it. Mm. Um, but that, again, takes support. It also takes a strong person. So how can I basically how can we build a strong person and if you're talking about a teenager or a child the way to do that is is extreme support mm -hmm. lots of love and care lots of meeting the child where they are mm -hmm. we don't want to yell at them we don't want to curse at them yeah. uh, I see a lot of that happening mm -hmm. in today's age and what people don't realize is you want to create a Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. but you're not going to create that if you're consistently beating that child up, That's right. That's you know? Right. So those things are really important. Mm -hmm. As an adult, you know, as an adult, if you're left with trauma, then you have to really get into self-care and self-help books are amazing. Yeah. Um, a self-help podcast yeah. is huge That's as well. Mm -hmm. You know, fill your mind with, with positive affirmations, positive thoughts, when you feel the need to cry, cry. Let it out and release your emotions. That's good. That's good. I think um, one one key thing is like, uh, and and I identify with that is just kind of uh, facing it, you know. Uh, and 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 it's like, and of course there there are different things that are gonna come with facing it. Like you said, that could be tears. That can be just uh, overwhelming. You know. Uh, bunch of feelings or yes. whatever it may be yes. uh and 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 you have to just learn how to navigate through it you know what i'm saying and i know for me uh it was having sometimes maybe somebody to talk to yeah. uh maybe you know having that safe place that i can go in and of myself or physically going to a place you know what i'm saying <laughs> whatever it was uh to sometimes de-escalate myself you know what yes. i'm saying uh, based on whatever it is I'm feeling, but nonetheless, uh, you can't live in this cage. Well, you can live in a cage if you want, if that's your choice. But if you are a person that says, "Hey, look, I want to overcome this. I don't want to be a slave to this anymore." Well, I have to just get out and face it. Yeah, I'm gonna have triggers. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. that, that's the inevitable. But honestly, those things are there to really test us but help us grow you know what I'm saying because you, you uh, and, and, and this is just my belief I believe that you can't know that you're uh, I don't want to say over something but uh, uh, or, or heal maybe that's the right word or, or healing from something you know until you have been triggered or tested again you know what I'm saying like for me until I got married I didn't there, there were certain things I thought I was done with you know what I'm saying yeah. and then now, as somebody said, when you're married, that's like looking in the mirror every day. And so it's like, man, it brought up things that I'm like, oh, like, hmm, 
Yeah. Okay, you know, but I had to learn how to navigate through it. You know what yes. I'm saying? Versus saying, you know what, I'm going to hide it, I'm going to run from it, and, and that would actually be unhealthy for me and my wife, and it would create more complications, mm-hmm. you know? And so, uh, but anyways, yeah, so I, that that was great. That yeah. was great. I love that. And so, uh, but yeah, okay, Miss Tiffany, yeah, yeah. So you, you, you're the real deal. <laughs> you're the real deal. Now, I, I love talking to people. And look, make no mistake about it, social workers, uh, substance use disorder counselor, what, whatever you are, you don't necessarily have to have, uh, you know, personal experience to be in the profession. But uh, I love talking to people who do have that experience uh, because I feel like, you know, you can uh, empathize, with that, if that's the word, uh, with that person that's sitting across from mm-hmm. you, you know, versus, the person, versus a, that person who doesn't have that experience, you know. And so uh, one of my counselors, um, when I was going through treatment, uh, actually probably one of the best counselors that I've known, she was... She never did drugs a day in her life, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But she was just great at what she did, you know what I'm saying? Because she had been working in the field for so long. It's like, they're, they're, you can't get nothing by, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So she knew yeah. the game, so she was great, you know, so you don't necessarily have to be. But for those who do have that experience and have that story, uh, uh, even more, you know what I'm saying, once again, because you can sit across with somebody. And I, I don't ever like to say, oh, I know how it feels, because we're all different, like, like you say, I mean, we can hit our toe and one can hurt more than the other, you mm-hmm. know. But I've been there, you know yes. what I'm saying? And, 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 okay, these are some things that work for me. I know as a peer, I know I can share things. As a social worker, how, how does that work? Like, uh, are you able to kind of talk about and share those personal experiences to help others navigate? I know as a peer support specialist, we can kind of, that's the liberty that we have. Uh, as a social worker, how does that work? So you only disclose if it will help the client. Gotcha. So when, that, when your client comes to you, it's about them. Mm-hmm. It's not about you. So if there's something that you, you can disclose to help them, then okay go right ahead that's acceptable but always i love well we call it client-centered therapy Mm -hmm. and then you have solution focused therapy you have all these theories just salt and i love um client-centered therapy because i'm focused on the client Mm -hmm. i'm going to listen and hear everything that they have to say Mm -hmm. their priority yeah so that's what you want to keep in mind. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So, uh, Mister, you, you, where are you from? Uh, so I was born here okay. uh, in New Orleans, Louisiana. Okay. But I've spent a lot of time in California. Mm. So yeah. Okay. Okay. I so guess I don't right. sound like your typical <laughs> Southern girl, and I get that all the time. <laughs> Like she, she ain't got the New Orleans twain. No, you know, like me, me, no, you know? it just traveled a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's yeah. Good. So uh, we we we're gonna have to land this plane uh, very soon. So uh, I want to go out with a few things. So uh, let let's talk to someone out there. Yes. There is um, a little girl. You know. Okay. There is an adult. You yes. know. Uh, alike that are dealing with trauma, you mm-hmm. know, traumatic experience, maybe similar to yours, maybe different. But uh, nonetheless, uh, what can you say to that person who may be watching right now and say, you know what, I don't know how to, I've been dealing with this for however long and I don't know how to get help, where to start. Uh, the only thing I know to do is to do what I've known to do and maybe that's coping with it through drugs, alcohol, or wrong relationships, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so uh, what what can you say to that person? I'm sorry, y'all, look, forgive forgive me real quick. We got we got somebody that's blowing. So if you hear something, that's somebody blowing grass outside, and they kept doing this this morning. Like, we we literally took about, what, 10, I know. 15 minutes to get started? Because every time we bloopers. press the record button, <laughs> they come back. It's, like, it's yes. like, oh, my God. They get quiet, and we like, all right, here we go. Like, <laughs> No, it, it, it was, was unfortunate. It was yeah, was but uh, I'm sorry. But let's let let's talk to that person. Uh, what what can you say to that person who says, you know what, I'm in the thick of it and I don't know what to do? So what I would say to the person that's in the thick of it, because we all have that, um, I'd really like you to find something anywhere within your realm that's special to you. Um, it could be anything. And I've shared this before. I remember uh, 
I was having a really rough time in foster care. And the before my mother died, the last thing she did for me was she got my ears pierced. Mm. And so in, in my darkest and, and harshest times, I would say, well, at least I got my ears pierced. Mm. Uh, something as simple wow. as that, just to latch on to. And, and please reach out. You know, there are people in your circle. Perhaps there are people outside of your circle. For children, you're going to school each day. Reach out to your counselors. You know, that's what they're there for. Yeah. Go and speak and talk to someone. For the adults, again, there's the healing center here that I've heard about. There are a lot of dis- different places that if you just need to reach out, capital area, amen. Capital Area is here. You know, reach out and talk to someone. Get that burden off your chest and seek help when you need it. Man, couldn't have said it no better. But look, man, look, this has been awesome, Miss Tiffany. I appreciate appreciate you so much. I really do. This this is heartfelt. Um, Last thing, uh, you you talked about self-care a a little bit. Yes. Uh, What are are some other things that Tiffany does uh, to keep Tiffany in the right place well I read Mm -hmm. I love reading um and I love to just take a day and go to the spa the other thing I really really enjoy is a nice nature walk you know if the weather's great I mean that will really put you in touch with spirituality Mm -hmm. whatever you know whether you're Christian Buddhist whatever Mm -hmm. it will put you in touch with that and kind of ground you Mm -hmm. a little bit yeah um taking a nice walk, you know, um, and I love classical music. Mm-hmm. So it kind of helps me late in the evening. I like to just play it just to help me calm down a bit. That's good. You That's know, good. and lemon water. Oh, my gosh. What? Lemon water works miracles. If you're feeling down, put some pineapple in your lemon water or just lemon water. It will change things for you. Trust me on this. Mm. So it sounds like we need to have another episode. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, so I, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but uh, so last episode we had uh, Mr. Ricky uh, Pampo, who does the um, like physical education and exercise and stuff okay. with uh, some of our clients and whatnot. Okay. But uh, so we talked a lot about uh, like alkaline water. Uh, he broke down, you know, uh, alkaline versus acidic and, you know, just talking about the body and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think you might want to check that out. Okay, I certainly will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it sounds like we need to have Miss Tiffany come back and give us some good health tips, like in regards to water, put lemon and pineapples and all kind of fruit in our water. Because, look, we, look, a lot of us are drinking Cokes and Red Bulls and it ain't healthy for us. No. Oh, and exercise. Right, yes, do exercise. That's critical. Amen. Yeah, Amen. get rid of those carbonated toxins. They're not good for you. Mm. Are you vegan? <laughs> I am mm, pescatarian for the okay. most part. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, okay. for I the try, most part. I tried part. it. I tried <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. I ain't going to lie. I tried it. Yeah. Um, and I, I still will say that I eat pretty healthy. Yes. But um, to say that I would just be completely vegan, I don't know. You know, yeah. Uh, there, I, there, yeah, I tried it briefly. I need cheese. Yeah. I don't eat pork every day. Let me do. Let me go on record and say that yes. I don't eat pork every day. Uh, nothing against anybody who does it. It's just a decision that I make. I don't eat it every day. Uh, but you know, during the holidays, if my mom makes a gumbo, yes, she puts some sausage in there. Yes. Eat it. Yes. yes, and I love cheese. <laughs> I can't give up cheese. <laughs> I can't give up the cow. I love the moo. I, yes. I, I love it. I yes, love it. I don't drink milk, but I like cheese. Yes, you know, and it's like it's weird because it's the same, you know, coming from the same place. Let's say, yes. but uh, but anywho, look. We about to get off tra- track, but look, thank y'all for stepping back into the area. Look, we want to, uh, once again, man, we appreciate y'all, man, for all of our subscribers, all of our listeners, all of our viewers out there, man. Look, thank y'all for coming back week to week, man, and investing your time here. You could have been anywhere. You could have done anything else, but you chose to spend a little time with us just to get a little bit of information. Yes. Hopefully, this information helps you. If not, pass it to someone who you think it may help. You know what I'm saying? Share it with someone else. Make sure that you like this video. Make sure that you share this video. And if you're not subscribed to the YouTube, what you waiting on? I'm going to wait. What you waiting on? Yeah. 
Like, share, subscribe, all that. It, 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 it don't cost you nothing. It's free. Just do it. All right? Yes. <laughs> Miss Tiffany, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Grateful yes, to be ma here. Look, appreciate y'all once again, man. We will see y'all next month, man, in the area.